Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and you know it's been a little while since I've sat down and just given you a little basic approach to how I do illustration. I've done tons of videos, live streams, all kinds of stuff over the last couple of years uh, where I'm demonstrating things, but I haven't really done anything in a while where I'm just really breaking things down simply and talking about my basic, uh, what are the, the, the six basic things I think about when approaching an illustration. So that's what I want to do today. I want to give you the six the six different things that I think about when I'm approaching an illustration. So without talking about it anymore, let's go ahead and dive in. Today I want to do an illustration of this lion. This is some reference that I pulled from our recent trip to Africa that my son photographed, uh, Dustin Blaze. And I thought this would be a nice, um, well, first of all, I love the expression and the spirit and the personality uh, in this lion's eyes. But also I think it, 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 it is the basis for a nice composition for a square format that I want to do. And that, by the way, is the first element that I think of when it comes time to thinking about my illustrations, and that is composition. What is composition? Well, it's the arrangement of shapes, light and dark, in, within the space of your, of your illustration. So in this case, I've got a square format, and my composition is going to be how I arrange the shapes and the shapes are made from light and dark areas. So it's however I decide to arrange those shapes within that square format is my composition. Now looking at this, um, you'll see there's not a, there isn't any real direct light. It's all diffused lighting in here. And as many of you know, I love to do dramatic lighting. So I'm going to add my own lighting to this composition. And uh, one of the things that I really love about it is the way we get this nice big curve through the uh, the lion's mane and how it curves back around. And I think we can continue that with the body even more and maybe even bring the tail up. So from a compositional standpoint, I want this swooping kind of uh, 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 feel through the composition. And I'm going to emphasize that with some dramatic lighting as well. But uh, and, and not just emphasize it with lighting, but I'm also going to arrange objects within the composition to help uh, to help get that swooping feeling and the only other objects we have in here other than the lion is grass and that's one one of the things I love because you can take grass and you can do anything you want with it so as the as the cat is sitting here and I want to get this big kind of sweeping feel I'm going to arrange the grass to help me do that and, and guide the eye so let's do a quick thumbnail because that's another thing that I like to do. And what's a thumbnail, you ask? Well, a thumbnail is just a small illustration. Very quick. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move this onto my other monitor. I'm gonna make this gray. I like to work on a gray background. Why do I work on a gray background? Well, I it, it when you work in gray, you can either go lighter or you can go darker. When you're working over white, the only direction you can go is 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 darker. And so whenever you put anything down, it already looks darker than what it really is. When you work on gray, you get a much better sense of your value structure. Value meaning light and dark. So once again, I'm going to jump up here. Let me grab a brush. Let me just sketch out. Now, your thumbnail does not have to be pretty. But it should give you somewhat of a representation of what you want to draw. I've got that square format drawn in there. Let me... Put my drawing on another layer that way. I can move it around if I need to. Because I want this, this almost kind of uh, windswept feel. Let me blow this up even more for you. So if we bring him in, let me. And I, notice how the eyes, the face is going to end up pretty much in the center of the composition, which is kind of cool. There are no hard, fast rules. There's the, you know, a lot of guys will follow the rule of thirds for their compositions, which that's something I like to do. Um, but really, when it comes down to composition, if it looks good, it's good. Now, there's things you want to be careful of. You don't want your, a lot of times, your object to having a, uh, have a tangent on the side of, you know, and things like that, but on the sides of the, of your, of your uh, image, the border. But if you can avoid things like that, then that's great. But really it's coming down, it comes down to just 
arranging things in a way that are, that's pleasing. Don't overcomplicate it. You know, I was in, when I was in college, and, you know, my, some of my instructors would really make it complicated, but it doesn't have to be that complicated. It's just, if it looks good, it's good. Think of it that way. Bringing this in here. I'm moving up a little bit. That's why I like being able to have that on another level because it gives me the ability to move things around. There's his back leg, body. Might even bring his paw up. But either way, got everything right here. Now I've got this idea that he's it, it's there's heavy shadows. And another thing you guys will know, some of you know, that I love dramatic, really dramatic lighting, heavy shadows. See here, I can have some of the grass coming up like so. So very very quickly, I'm gonna lay this in. Now from a lighting standpoint, I'm gonna put a layer on top. I'm gonna set that blend mode to multiply. And I'm just going to go to a nice kind of not quite halfway down the uh, towards black, just a somewhat gray. And because it's multiplying, it's going to multiply with the gray that I've already got. And I just want to play with my shadow, my light and shadow patterns. I have this idea of the light coming across his face, and there'd be shadow underneath the cheekbones, shadows in here. That part of the lion's mane would be in shadow. Maybe a little shadow or a little light right there. And really get dark behind him. This is, it's fun to explore in this stage, in the thumbnail stage. Just get in there and just get dark with it. Really dramatic. So you can see I'm pretty much laying in everything pretty dark except for where I want your eye to go now in here maybe we pull out some of those let me grab my eraser maybe it's not so so dark in here maybe I can get a little contrast right there like that ooh that might that might work get some trees in the background here see this is where you experiment couple bits of light coming on there. I can go a little darker with it now, get a little deeper with the shadows in some areas. Okay, so composition, the first thing I think about when I'm working out my illustration is how, you know, how am I going to arrange the shapes? That's your composition. How are you going to arrange your shapes within the borders? Right on top of that, let's set that to overlay. Little bits of light here and there. So it's just a quick, a quick idea of what this illustration can be. And that's what I'm doing now. So you can see that this is a fair amount different from the reference that I'm looking at. From a lighting standpoint, here we go. Okay, so you're going to take that and I'm going to, and, you know, look at it small, look at it big. Um, this light here, I'm, I think I want to take that light and carry it through a little bit more. Let me go back to my eraser. <clears throat> so we have more of a shadow going across his body. There we go. And get some dark shapes back in here too balance it looking at contrast looking at where I want the eye to go so I'm going to put some back over that again so there we go that, that for me is a rough very rough idea of, of my value structure what I'm thinking of and come back up in here maybe there's our rough value structure right there that's my my rough uh, composition. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to look at it. It's going to be my reference, and I'm going to jump in with the with the uh, with the illustration. So I've got my thumbnail done, and like I said, I like to use two monitors. So I've got my main monitor here on my Cintiq Pro 32, and then up above me, I keep my 
main reference, and also my thumbnail, the little sketch that I just did. I keep all of that so I have reference to, uh, to see it and, um, you know, so I don't forget. So uh, let's dive into the finish illustration now. I've got my elements that I need right here. So we've covered the first thing I think about, which is composition. The next thing I want to think about is just basically my drawing. I like to have a good drawing to go off of. There are other illustrators, painters out there that just do a very rough drawing and then refine as they go. I don't do that. I like to have a strong drawing to begin with because for me, it's like having good blueprints. And the better the blueprints are, I think the better the finished building, or in this case, the finished illustration is going to be. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna dive in with my drawing. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in very rough, just like I did with my thumbnail, and uh, go on a new layer. But I'm gonna go in very rough with my basic shapes. You can see here, I'm just looking for basic shapes on this lion head. And it really, you know, when it comes to digital illustration, it doesn't matter what brush you use. Find the brush that you're most comfortable with. I like to make my own brushes. I've got a whole tutorial on how to do that in my digital painting course at creatureartteacher.com. I'm going to push the, the expression on this face a little bit. Now I'm always looking at, I'm comparing, you know, I'm make, I want to make sure this mouth is accurate. I look at how it falls according to that eye up there. And I'm thinking about bone structure. I know there's cheekbones under here. There's teeth under there. There's a lot of things in there that, that affect the shape of the face. So here, I want to make sure we're getting that sweeping feel. I'll even push the pose a little bit to get a little more of this. Keep in mind, too, that your thumbnail and your composition, you know, when you start out, it's just a, keep an open mind to, to, to adjust it as you go. I, my compositions always <clears throat> adjust as I go. I might find something better or stronger or a different idea as I go, and I'll adjust as I go. So keep that in mind. So there's my rough, I've got a very rough scribble in here of what I'm thinking. Right there. You've got the sweeping feel through here. Got some of the body right down in there. And I got enough of the body shown, I think, and then you know, the rest of this is going to be really thick grass texture. We're going to keep this really loose. So now what I like to do is I want to go ahead and refine that drawing. So I knock the opacity back and put a new layer on top of that. And I grab my pastel C brush, which is a brush I made a few years ago that I love to draw with. And, uh, and then just kick back and, and uh, refine the drawing. Like I said, a refined drawing to me is like having nice blueprints to start with when you're building a house. Okay, so now I feel like I have a strong enough drawing laid in here. You can see, you know, I've got that refined drawing right over the top. There's the old rough drawing right there, and then I've got that refined drawing over the top. I can start using that now uh, uh, to, to start laying in some color. So, um, so, so far what we've gone over is my composition and my drawing. Those are the first two elements out of the six that I really think about when it comes time for good illustration. Now, the next thing I'm gonna think about is my local color. Now, local color is the color of an object when it's not in light and it's not in shadow. It's just the color. And that's really what I wanna start laying in. I just wanted, especially when I'm working digitally, I have the ability to do that because I can paint shadows right over the top. So in the case of the lion, um, I wanna get this nice sandy kind of warm blonde hair laid in here. I'll do it on a layer underneath. I'll lay it in loose and I'll pretty much keep it all monotone. Just gonna lay it in really quickly. Cause it get, it'll get refined as we go down the road. That's the other thing to think about. You know, even though I wanted to do somewhat of a, a refined drawing, 
um, I still try to stay pretty loose throughout the drawing and throughout the painting, really, until towards the end. And then it's just a few refinements here and there, and, uh, and you've got a, a nice painting. So I'm working on him. Uh, the background I tend to work uh, separately, so I'm going to work on that later. And I've got my thumbnail to go off of to remember the value structure that I want. So when I lay in this, this basic local color, that's not the end of it. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and lay in other color as well. But one of the things I like about working digitally like this is I've got little things that I can do that I can't do in traditional, obviously. But one of the things I can do is I can lock this layer right over here on the right. I can alpha lock it. So I can't, now I can't draw or paint anywhere outside uh, of what I've already painted. So that gives me the ability to get really loose and have some fun with uh, some of the other fur colors. Now, I'm thinking about, I'm just thinking about color right now. I'm not thinking about shadow. I want to emphasize that. You'll see me jump around quite a bit. Because I'm really just, just laying in various color differences. So the key is to stay really loose because we've got our drawing in here that's going to help us pull everything back. You know, when we, when we go to do details, you know, we've got, we've got all the drawing in there that's going to help us do that. So you'll notice, you know, I don't worry about being too, staying, you know, really accurate. I, matter of fact, the looser, at, the, at this point, the looser, the better, I think. So staying loose, you can see, I'm just, just varying up the color, the natural variations that you're going to see in the, in the hide of the cat. We're going to get all the light and dark and shadows and all that. That'll be next. Those are our next elements that I find extremely important. So I'm going to go ahead and take, whoops, not turn it off, take the lock off of it, the alpha lock. And I'm going to come in here. I want, I want to draw some of this fur out so I can break that silhouette of what I've drawn already by turning that alpha lock off. And it gives it a little bit better full look. Still no shadows yet, okay? Variations of blonde in the fur. I love doing these loose illustrations. They're so much fun to do. Yeah, let's get that sweeping feel. I'm going to put a layer on top of the uh, of the cat layer. And just throw in some grass layers real quick. Ever so quickly. I'm going to first of all match a lot of the dried grasses. Then we'll throw some greens over the top. I'll do this very quickly. This is, this is just going to be an under underpainting. We're going to fill that in a lot with a lot more. Now let's get one in the background. I'm going to go a little cooler, maybe a little darker with it. So now I'm going under the cat, behind the cat. I want to continue with the compositional elements, kind of swooping around. Throw some green elements in here. They're just going to, this is just a base. Staying loose. That drawing is going to help. And having done that thumbnail is going to help us as well. It's going to go to the layer on top. I'm going to lock that. Maybe go a little warmer. Let's go ahead and unlock it. I think we can go ahead and unlock it. I'm going to have a lot of stuff over the top of this. Okay. 
So right now we're going to do our first layer of shadows. I'm going to get in there. Now that we've done this, I'm going to clean up some of this underdrawing a little bit. Just around the main a little. There we go. So keeping that swooping composition, my next uh, thing beyond local color that I think about is shadow. Now shadow is really going to start to define where we guide the eye. Okay, it's light and shadow. Those are the elements that really help guide the eye and put your viewer right where they should be. And that's your job as the magician, as the artist, is to do that. So I'm going to put a layer on top of everything. And I'm going to go ahead and set it to multiply. What multiply does, it's a blend mode where when I draw down whatever color I'm using, it's going to multiply with the colors underneath. And if I do it right, it can look like shadows. So I'm going to go a little warm uh, but on the gray side of things, so it's going to be cool within the warm, a cool warm, about midway, maybe a little less than midway. And thinking about those elements, so we're on multiply right now. And I'm thinking about that shadow, just like we did on the thumbnail, coming across the, sh the face of the cat and along the back. Give me a little shadow cast right here. A little bit under the nose here. I'm thinking of a little shadow coming off of the cheek. I have some fur coming here. Don't be afraid to be bold with your shadows, but always think about what you're doing with them. And then there's that shadow coming across right there. There. Oh, that feels good. When you start to get a nice dramatic shadow, boy, it's, there's nothing, nothing like it. It feels really strong. There we go. There's our shadows there. So now I'm going to think about I'm going, to, I'm going to go throw shadows on everything here, right over everything. All the same layer. Because now I want everything to start coming together in value. This is all part of the composition, right? You're, that's one of the biggest elements of your composition is your light and dark. Because it really, as you can see here, it's going to really guide the eye. Now I'll come in and I'm going to erase some areas out. There, so you can see as we draw this shadow kind of hanging over him, that the light becomes that much stronger now, doesn't it? And your areas of greatest contrast are going to draw attention. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to, I'm going to hit it all. Hit it all, and then we'll come back and add our lighter areas like we did in our thumbnail. But you'll see as your illustration grows and develops, you might see things that you like better in a large format that you didn't see in your thumbnail. That's why I say always keep it, keep the possibilities open. Because look at this, I kind of like just having these little slivers of light on him. And we can hit a couple of slivers of light on the grass and maybe in the foreground. What if we had something... See, I can, because we have it on another layer, I can come in with my eraser and play with it. Go, hey, maybe, maybe not, but maybe in the corner... I think that's too distracting. It's too far outside of our center of interest to draw the eye there. So I don't want to do that. But what if we had, I'm going to change erasers here. It might be interesting to have a few areas back here that are catching light to get some contrast. like what we were doing earlier. 
Yeah, see that starts to come starting to like that. And we can keep this pretty abstract back here. We get some negative shapes coming through. And look at this, we can do the same thing. Oh yeah. Just have fun with the shapes. We were looking up through leaves in the background. So we have this kind of effect back here, this abstract kind of look of looking up through the leaves. Just like that. Ooh, that feels nice and dramatic, see? That I like. I'm liking that. I like that, the staged lighting. And keeping this all simple back here. We're going to do some more work over the top of it, but I think what we've got right now is a pretty interesting composition. So what we've done, we've, we've thought about our composition. How are we arranging our shapes? Then we got in there and uh, decided to do the drawing, and I start loose and get refined. I'm going to get that local color in there, which is basically the color of everything when it's not in light and shadow. And then we go in, and it's a matter of finding your shadow shapes and this is like i said where the composition really comes together now keep in mind we're going to go even darker with some of these shadows this is just our first pass just to set up our um our initial uh, uh shapes composition whatnot i'm gonna try taking out even more back here <clears throat> okay this is a big acacia tree in the background maybe and he's sitting in a forest. So let's go ahead and put a layer over the top of that. And uh, I'm going to set that to uh, overlay. And watch this. I'm going to go a little warmer with it. And not too... A little more orange. And more on the gray bright side. And now... I'm going to get in here. Now watch what this does. Maybe go a little warmer with it. And just slightly darker. And now we're getting some nice light. Oh yeah. See there? Painting with, we're painting with light. With that blend mode set to overlay, you get these really great lighting effects. Because that warm light is going to affect the, your local color and not only brighten it it'll warm it up see there how about we hit a couple of light areas on the tail yeah look at that well you can really feel that light coming through see one of the cool things about this stage is that this is where you really start to see the painting come together i've had a lot of younger artists that don't have experience taking it further saying, hey, if I had gotten it this far, I would have, I would have called it finish. But we're actually pretty far from finishing. But it's amazing how much you can get in here uh, because at this point, we've got everything laid in. Now it's just a matter of getting the details in. Some of the, the, um, uh, some of the reflected light that we're going to talk about, um, slight differences in values against other values and, and, um, and then obviously the grasses, uh, and then we've got basically an illustration done. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and dive into that. And uh, what I want to do is to start refining areas within the shadows. You know, there's going to be darker areas within shadows and, uh, and lighter areas within shadows. So you can model um, within there. So I'm going to put another layer on top. I'm going to set this one to multiply as well and go about the same darkness as I did before except now I'm just pushing some of these dark areas a little bit more that I think can get a little darker one of the ways to get hair texture is to be is to deepen the shadows in between clumps of hair so that the lighter clumps stand out and they'll come forward. So I'm not really painting 
individual hairs, I'm just kind of modeling the, the big clumps. Once again, I want to keep this loose, but you can see I'm working my darks within the shadows. I'm staying out of the light areas. And right now, I'm not worrying about going really warm or really cool, although my shadows would be considered a little bit warm, but they're on the cool side of warm. So I'm still thinking about temperature. Just not, I'm not taking the temperature all the way over to the cool hue, which would be our blues and greens. I might do that a little bit later, but right now I think I want to keep it all fairly warm. Now I might get a little, a couple of hard shadows within the light areas just because they will be there as they cast shadows on top of each other, clumps of fur. So I want you to see that even though this is a loose illustration at this point still, we're approaching it from a very, a very methodical approach of how we, you know, create our light areas, dark areas, that sort of thing. And so we're keeping it under control the whole time. And by doing that, you can really kind of work your illustration in a way that you're not putting any effort in in areas that you don't need to. I'm trying to keep control the whole time. By doing that, or the way I do that, is approaching it methodically each, each time. You know, I, I, I find that drawing, I lay in the local color, I lay down, down that first shadow layer, lay down the light layer, lay down the next shadow layer, and so on and so on. Now watch, when I, when I draw this shadow between his leg and his belly, I'm just going to draw negative shapes disappearing into the grass. And we'll work that out later with more shapes of grass. Keeping that nice and simple. Always the key word. Same thing here. I'm just going to start drawing in little negative shapes as the grass overlaps. There. See that light? Boy, that light's really starting to pop now, isn't it? Might even be able to get a little bit of... Right there. So it feels like, because it's coming across this part of the leg, maybe we want to get a little bit right there. Little spots of light coming through that can't quite get past all the other shadow areas. There we go. Nice. Now I want to throw in, start throwing in some grass. Um, actually, I want to hit a couple of areas. Uh, let's refine this a little bit. So I've, I've gone dark on my, on my multiply there. I'm going to do a layer on top now, and I'm, I'm just going to keep it normal. It's just normal layer, and I want to hit some of the lighter areas that might come through, and these are going to give me my fine details. So let's, I mean, I'm going to grab the color, lighten it up, and here's where I just hit a few details in the fur here and there. Not many. I don't have to do it a lot. These are the things that really carry a lot of weight. See there? Doesn't need much. See, whenever you draw these little light accents over their dark negative spaces that you've created, it creates depth. And the way I'm doing the fur right now is the same idea that I'm going to use when I do the grass. It's the exact same idea. They're no different in their thinking. Look how loose I'm able to keep it. Once again, just get selective. A little bit selective of where you, you hit some of these because you don't need a lot. Like on here, I can go really super bright because I know it's sunlight hitting it. There, 
there. See that? Adds to that feeling of light. One thing I want to do in here is get a little light on those eyes, a little sparkle on the eyes. Because the, this part is kind of black, it reflects sky color, so you tend to get a little blue reflection in the black of the eye. Maybe a little bit in the eye itself from the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing the grass over the top. And I'm, so I'm going to create another multiply layer. And I'm just going to quickly go in and start painting in negative shapes between grasses. Just made up negative shapes. Lots of triangles and imagining if, you know, a stalk was coming through. Some of the negative shapes that that would make. And then we're going to work over the top of that. Don't be afraid to make some of these negative shapes big so that you can get some depth. I know it looks weird right now, but trust me, just do this and then we're going to work out our grass composition. I'll try to keep these negative shapes moving in the same direction that I want the eye moving in. Okay, so I'm going to lay a layer, put a layer over the top of that. I'm just going to grab some of that local color. And I want to go, I think I'm going to go gray with it. But just go a little bit lighter. And I'm going to grab my pastel C brush. And put the taper sensitivity on. And I'm going to start drawing grasses. I'm going to pay particular attention to hit areas in between my negative spaces, but don't be afraid to draw through your negative spaces because that's where it's going to create depth. And you don't want to go too bright because remember, this is all in shadow. So we want to make sure that this feels like it's staying in shadow. Remember, keep your grass feeling spontaneous. So once again, I'm trying to, I want the grass to feel natural, but I also want it to support that sweeping composition that I'm trying to create. And this is just one layer. We're going to, we're going to hit more layers over the top of this. We're going to build this up. Now, this grass I'm laying in here really spontaneously, but it also comes from years of looking at grass and really looking at the way it grows, uh, especially when I was in Africa. That was one of the things, because I know grass in Africa is going to be different than grass that I'm familiar with here in North America. So I want to make sure that I'm drawing grass accurately. So I shot a lot of pictures of grass. And so I boiled it down to a shorthand. So here's our first layer with our negative spaces in there, coming along. Now I want to go behind the lion, create a layer behind the lion, and basically do the same thing. So now I'm thinking about the grass behind the lion. I can't put a layer behind the line because I've, we've got our shadow layer over the whole thing. So if I try to put a layer under the shadow layer, the grass will just come out dark. Which isn't terrible. I can do, I can do that, an element of that. I can definitely have some dark grasses coming up. These grasses, when you get enough in there, it just creates a nice kind of pattern. I think I'm going to try erasing back some more of this guy here. It's getting a little complex. I want to see if I can simplify it. So the head 
as a nice simple silhouette which is exactly what we'd put in a thumbnail <laughs> See, it always comes back to the thumbnail I'm going to put another layer on top. I'm going to set it to multiply. This time I'm going to do a gradient layer. And I want it to gradually get darker. I'm going to come over here and go to my gradient tool. Just come from the bottom up. Just a little bit at a time. So we have some nice shadow areas falling in here. There we go. So now I'm going to go in, I'm going to go over the top of that again. See, we've got a nice little buildup of our grasses. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going in and hitting areas that would be catching a little bit more light within the shadow. So they're not big, long strokes of grass. They're just little bits that are just catching little bits of light here and there. There might be some more than others in, you know, in certain areas. But what this does is it starts to break it up a little bit more. And we're going to do that with the, with the dead colors as well. So here I've worked my way up to a little bit of a lighter dead color. And I'm just laying in little details over the top. And this is where your eye will go. These lighter areas that catch your eye, even though it's in the shadow, it's light within lighter value within a dark value. All right, let's throw another layer on top. And as we make an adjustment, I'm going to put this to multiply that new layer on top. And we're going to go ahead and kind of darken it again. I'm going to go with maybe a little cooler color, see what happens. There we go. I'm going to get a little darker in the foreground. There. I'm going to put a little bit of a, just a little bit of a haze back there. It's kind of bluish just to balance it out a little bit. I'm going to knock back the opacity on the layer. There we go. I like I like having that little bit of atmosphere back there. I'm putting this nice cooling kind of blue in here against all that warm. Feels nice. And there, there we go. I think that that atmosphere right there adds a little bit. That's another thing to be willing to do is to get in there and change up your your as on the fly, change up your 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 drawing and your uh, your composition a little bit if you have to. Here, I'm going to get rid of some of these heavy lines. I don't feel we need everywhere. There, I'll leave them on the face a little bit. There, I like that. Now I can go in and. Push a little bit. There we go. Now what I want to do is I want to hit like some of these blades of grass. They're going to get hit by sunlight. This will be our finishing touch. And so what you want to do, you got to think about the grass is being blocked and, and some parts of it's stocked from hitting the light hitting it, but other parts is getting is getting lit. So it's like these little area like little spots of light here and there that are gonna hit through the grass. We put a little bit of that on the on the lion himself. There, see, this is the last little bit that gives it a little bit of zing. A little pazing. There we go. Might pull some of these back just a tear. Just pull them back. There it is. I think we got our image. 
I'm pretty happy with that. And so this is our approach, my approach to you know, my illustration. It's, it's sitting down and figuring out those six elements and the six elements being composition. How are you going to arrange the elements on your, within your space? Okay, that's composition. Then I'm gonna sit down and figure out and, and do my thumbnail drawing. And then I wanna sit down and figure out my drawing itself. Um, and I like to sit down and do somewhat of a refined drawing so that I, I can guide me throughout the entire painting process. Let me pull that up a little bit more for you. And, um, and then from there, I want to lay in my local color. And that's the beginning of really getting a sense of the richness of what it's going to be. But it's not until you get that next step where you start laying in the shadows that you really start getting a sense of the composition and light. And that's where it really comes together and starts to sing and you can start to get the, the drama in your piece. Um, and then we're going to add the light areas and then we do the details. And that for me is where it starts to sing. The details are in the grasses, the little bits of reflected light here and there, um, the little glints off the eye, you know, those little things. But it's making sure that you're tasteful with where you put your, your details. And it's not going to be easy. It's something that's taken me years and years and years to uh, refine. And I'm still working on it to quite a degree. So it's something that hopefully you'll be working at for a lifetime. But if you follow these, these simple, these six elements that I go for and, um, and try to hit that every time you do your illustration, um, I think you'll have a little bit of a head start and, uh, and get something that looks pretty good to come out of it. So I hope you learned something today. Go on out there, put some beauty back into the world, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.